Hi guys and welcome back to another show of Keto in the Kitchen with Jasmine. Today what we're going to be making is we're going to make a big pot a three pound pot of chili and this is for tonight's cook off and what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to be filming tonight's festival which is a chili cook off in our small town so welcome to the show okay guys so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take bell pepper with chopped onion and then we're going to take rendered chicken fat and I am going to chop up the rendered chicken fat and I'm going to put it in a pan and I'm going to use it to saute the uh, bell pepper and also the onion. What I had actually done is I had chopped it earlier and I froze it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to chop up nine garlic cloves and also add it into the pan. So instead of using butter, we're using rendered chicken fat. And this is what the chopped up garlic looks like. And this is what the bell pepper, the onions, the rendered chicken fat, and the garlic looks like inside of the large pot. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to season the bell pepper, onion, garlic, and rendered chicken fat with salt and pepper. and then just give it a stir. And what I did is I used a long spoon so I could reach inside of that huge pot. And what you're going to do is you're just going to cook the bell pepper, onion, and garlic until, it's until the onions are translucent and the green bell pepper is uh, tender. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle liberally onion and garlic powder into the pot. And then go ahead and give that a stir. And what I notice is that the spices were sticking to the bottom because the flame is kind of high and the chicken fat was not actually putting out too much, um, wasn't releasing enough um, fat. So it wasn't releasing enough oil. So what I had to do is I added some uh, vegetable broth to the bottom of the pan and I stirred it to loosen it. which is a good idea to get into if you notice that your brown spice or your spices are browning and sticking to the bottom of the pot. It's not actually gonna hurt it, but if it does that, you don't want it to um, burn or anything like that. So it is a good idea to add vegetable broth just to loosen it a little bit or, you know, beef broth or chicken broth or anything like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and let the vegetables cook until the liquid evaporates. While that is going on and that's cooking, I'm going to brown my ground round. And what this is, is locally sourced beef. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm adding two tablespoons of olive oil to the pot. And then I'm going to add the ground beef and it's going to be on a medium high setting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the seasoning to the ground beef and to do that I'm adding to start it's two quarters of a teaspoon full of allspice. The next ingredient we're adding is one teaspoon each of salt and pepper. Now we're adding one teaspoon each of garlic and onion powder. Now add one teaspoon of chicken or vegetable bouillon. It's actually your choice, whatever you wanna use. Now add one teaspoon of oregano. 
Now add one teaspoon of thyme. So I did want to mention that this recipe is for a large party. The recipe I'm posting in the directions down below, though, are going to be for just a small pot for you and your family or whoever you want to cook for. Now what we're going to add is one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And then, of course, just give it a stir. Now what you're going to add is three tablespoons of chili powder, and now one tablespoon of oregano. Now we're going to add a teaspoon and a half of coriander. And then give it a stir and add about a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne. And one thing I wanted to mention is that if you see oil develop on the beef, that's okay, because you're just gonna drain the oil out into a colander anyway, so you're gonna strain it out. And of course, that's at the end. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add two teaspoons of cocoa powder. And then give it a stir. And what we're going to do now is chop up one whole pickled jalapeno. And what I had done is I turned off my burner where the vegetables were. I'm going to turn it back on. I'm going to chop this up turn it back on, and then I'm gonna stir my pot and then I'm going to turn it back off just to let it cool again. Okay, so now my ground beef is browned. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to dump it in here in the strainer and I'm going to strain it over the sink. And you can use whatever method you feel is best, but if you don't want a lot of grease in it, you can do it that way. Or you can take a plate, put down paper towels, whatever you feel is best. Okay, so while the browned ground beef is straining over the sink, what I'm going to do now is I've turned my burner off where the vegetables were sauteing, and I'm now going to add six jars of paste salsa. So that's three jars of mild, paste salsa, and then three jars of medium paste salsa. And that's going to be with the sauteed vegetables. Okay, so the first jar that I emptied was medium. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use up the rest of the contents of this. To do this, I'm just going to fill it with water and I'm going to set it aside so I can thin it out if need be. You can also use vegetable broth. So what I did is I just saved the lid and I just put it back on. What I'm gonna do is shake it and now I can use the rest of the ingredients and then I'll just throw out the top and recycle the jar. Okay, so I opened up all of my cans of salsa, my jars of salsa. Now what I'm going to do is open up three cans of six ounces of tomato paste. So that's what it looks like so far. And what I did is I just added a little bit of water from one of the jars of salsa. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some vegetable broth. What I'm going to add is the rest of this one quart of vegetable broth to the pot. I just wanted to mention that at this time my burner is not on. Now what I'm going to add is one teaspoon of liquid smoke. Now we're going to add one teaspoon of stevia and what this does is it cuts down the acidity in the tomato so it doesn't upset your stomach so much. What I did last night is all day long is I made beans. I made pinto beans and I made black beans. And what you can do is you can take a crock pot on high, add about two cups of beans to water and a teaspoonful of salt and let it cook all day long. And then what, I, what you can do is reserve the bean broth for other soups and other recipes. And then you can rinse out your beans in a strainer and then you can add it to your recipe. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add it to the large pot.
The next thing I'm going to do is add two 28 ounce cans of diced tomatoes to the pot. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt and one more jar of water with pay salsa. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on a low setting and allow that to simmer for a couple of hours. Okay, I just tasted that and it's kind of bitter. I'm used to cooking a smaller portion, portion size. So what I'm going to do is add another teaspoonful of stevia. And if you find that you're cooking beans or a soup for a large crowd of people and it's bitter, you just add another teaspoon to make it less bitter to sweeten it up just a touch to get rid of the acidity and the bitterness. And just so you guys know, that was stevia that I used to sweeten it. Okay guys, so I tasted the chili and it's a little bland. Like I said, I'm used to making a smaller pot, which the seasonings add out to be just right. I guess I have to triple it in this case. So I'm going to add three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. One half teaspoon of red pepper flakes. One chopped jalapeno, so that's two jalapenos total and another quarter teaspoon of cayenne, and we'll see if that doesn't improve the flavor. So two things I wanted to mention is that pepper actually makes a dish more spicy. So if you add it to jambalaya or creole or anything like that, it's going to give it more of a spicy flavor when combined with salt, garlic powder, and onion powder. And the second thing is, that while it seems counterproductive to add apple cider vinegar to a dish, like a tomato dish, you might, you might think that it's more acidic and so it's going to cause acid in your stomach. It actually really doesn't. It reduces the acidity in your stomach. So like if you have heartburn, a lot of doctors might tell you that it's good just to mix some apple cider vinegar in a cup of water and drink it to get rid of the acidity in your stomach. Okay, so what we're basically doing is we're doing drops to our chili. So the next ingredient I'm going to add is two teaspoons of cumin. And so what cumin does is it gives your chili a nice smoky flavor. Now what we're going to add is one teaspoon of smoked paprika. And then what I added was one tablespoon each of garlic and onion powder. one teaspoon of smoked paprika, and one half teaspoon of cinnamon. And what you're going to do is you're just going to taste as you're going along, because like I said, this is a larger container of chili that I'm making. And so if you have to add more spices, like more spiciness for other people or whatever you need to do, you can taste as you're going and add. So what you're going to do is you're just going to allow that to simmer on low and just allow the flavors to blend together. Okay, so I added three more tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, another half teaspoonful of red pepper flakes and cayenne pepper. Like I said, it's a big pot and you just kind of have to taste as you're going. In addition, I'm going to add another jar of medium salsa to it and it is paste and another chopped jalapeno. So that'll be three jalapenos. So what I just did is I added the locally sourced ground beef to it. Now I'm going to add another jar of paste salsa and some more of the water to it to thin it out a little bit. Okay, so as you can see from the video there, the chili is now done and I'm going to try it. I did reserve some vegetarian chili for myself before I put the ground beef in it. So I'm going to see what this tastes like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Now, I do wanna say that you can add all sorts of toppings to this. Jalapeno peppers, cheese, sour cream, corn, cilantro, green onion, hot sauce, whatever you wanna add. For me, I did sour cream. I did uh, cheddar cheese, jalapenos, and Spanish olives and hot sauce and it's really good. Have a good day guys.
Thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this. The recipe is posted below. Hi guys, happy holidays. Um, what we're doing today is we're getting ready to go downtown in my small town and we're doing a chili cook-off. I'm one of the participants. So I will be competing with other cooks or chefs in the area in a chili cook-off. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to film this. This is going to be a continuation of my chili recipe. I hope you guys enjoy tonight's events. I'm just taking oh, a quick okay. panoramic. <laughs> So guys, this is what we're doing. We're at the chili cook-off and this is just a quick video to show you what's going on. We have a lot of participants here in this contest. It's very exciting tonight. Very exciting. We've got a lot going on. Looks like a lot of good food. A lot of really, really good food going on here. And we're getting set up. There we go. That's mine right there, guys. So, guys, we have the judges going around right now asking for um, the name of our chili. Mine is Jasmine's chili. So, here we are, guys. And we are going to just get the band, and we're all ready to serve. So, there we go. Here on the left side, we have Dave Rogers with a smoked red chili. And then we have number two position, we have Aaron Shockley of Rolling, of Rolling Fork, which happens uh, to be the dessert truck. He's got a hillbilly chili. And then over here position number four, we got uh, Darren Mahoney uh, with a pork green chili. And then we've got uh, Girls Black Dog Saloon with a brisket chili. And position number six and position number seven, we have the Hot Dog Pizza and Mountain Whiskey Bakery. Not whiskey bag, bakery. And we have an andouille sausage uh, chili. And then over here in position number nine, we have Jasmine O'Connor with the uh, red beef chili. And then we have a dual position here in position number 10 and 11. We have Colorado Drinkers Coffee Shop with a red and green chili. Probably ended up with a little bit of caffeine, so uh, have some fun with that one. Uh, in position number 12, we have Michael Trepicano, <laughs> and we have uh, yeah, no, Come and Get It Cold Sheet, Come and Get It Cold Sheet Shorts, and uh, with DJ Olmsted in position number 13. So come on over. Alright guys, look at the size of this crowd. Isn't that amazing? My chili sold out really, really, really fast, guys. Really fast. 